Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the introduction. In this preclinical research, we're evaluating the development of non-invasive, non-viral-based gene transfer strategies that can target specific anatomical sites, including the liver. We believe this type of platform technology could be valuable for evaluating the clinical potential of many genetic therapies, including the liver-associated disorders hemophilia B, a factor IX blood coagulation disease, and familial hypercholesterolemia, resulting in impairment from the low-density lipoprotein receptor impairing cholesterol metabolism. Integrating HIFU into an ultrasound-based delivery approach could be valuable for enhancing the transfection efficiency, a limitation of this, of this strategy. In ultrasound-targeted microbubble destruction, or UTMD, we attach plasmid DNA, encoding a gene of interest to the shells of cationic lipid microbubbles that are filled with a heavyweight octafluoropropane gas. The gas and shell components enhance the stability and durability, as well as decrease the solubility of the bubbles within the bloodstream. And <clears throat> upon application of external ultrasound, DNA is delivered into hepatocytes in the, t in the liver target organ by acoustic cavitation at a resonant frequency of the microbubbles. In previous studies, we used immersion or unfocused, as I'll refer to it, transducers with UTMD, and we're currently evaluating a HIFU-based approach to optimize our transfection. These ultrasound images show the mouse heart in the top panels and liver in the bottom panels before and after microbubble delivery. You can see in the video shown below delivery of the microbubbles in the major hepatic vessels and liver vasculature. And it's at this point in the technique that we would then apply our immersion or high food transducers to mediate cavitation and transfection of our DNA into the hepatocytes. In previous studies, we used unfocused UTMD to direct the delivery of human factor IX to factor IX deficient mice as a model for preclinical gene therapy for hemophilia B. We co-delivered a liver-specific reporter plasmid with the human factor IX so we could evaluate transgene expression with bioluminescence, and we evaluated the human factor IX transgene using immunofluorescence staining on treated livers. We also performed h &E staining to evaluate potential hepatic bioeffects resulting from the technique. Um, we do observe some small regions of hepatic damage often in the 24 to 48 hours post-transfection. However, we usually observe uh, decreased effects or uh, resolved um, absence of effects uh, by four, days four to five after transfection. In these studies in treated plasma, we observed significant reductions in blood clotting times from treated mice in short term as well as long-term experiments. Uh, this correlated with improvements in factor IX activity um, that were clinically in the clinically therapeutic range uh, for severe hemophilia. To build upon this research and enhance the transfection of our gene transfer, we're incorporating HIFU technology. Our HIFU transducer is a 1.1 megahertz transducer from Sonic Concepts that incorporates a modular water coupling cone that allows us to modulate the targeting depth of the focal point between five and 18 millimeters. In these studies, we're delivering a liver-specific reporter plasmid in wild-type mice for optimization. We're using optical bioluminescence imaging, both in vivo and ex vivo, to evaluate transgene expression and the hepatic distribution in different regions of the liver. We're also using immunofluorescence image staining on cross-sections of treated mice to evaluate our multi-targeted depth approach. We evaluated multiple ultrasound parameters with HIFU, including changes to the pulse duration, pulse repetition period, amplitude signal, ultrasound treatment time, as well as the targeting depths um, in an effort to maximize our transfection efficiency and minimize potential bioeffects in the liver. In a series of studies, we've identified that short pulse durations, less than 20 microseconds, pulse repetition frequencies in the 50 to 60 hertz range, as well as a multi-targeted depth approach at 5 and 13 millimeters in a single treatment, resulted in improved transfection efficiency to high levels with minimal hepatic bioeffects assessed by H&E staining. 
Just to show an example in a side-by-side -side comparison of our HIFU and unfocused gene transfer, you can see um, a slight increase in transfection efficiency and transgene levels for the HIFU approach compared to the unfocused studies. And we've also observed significant changes in the transgene expression patterns resulting from both techniques with distinct clusters spread throughout regions of the liver for the HIFU-based approach compared to a more diffuse um, uniformly diffuse pattern of transfection associated with the unfocused approach. Um, we do observe, I'm showing a, a region of uh, liver damage from the HIFU approach that was observed um, proximal to an increased area of transgene expression um, 24 to 48 hours after treatment. However, with optimal parameters, um, these effects are virtually undetectable by days four to five after transfection. Overall, in summary, we're using a HIFU-based approach to mediate gene transfer to the liver, and we plan to apply this to hepatic gene deficiency disorders compared to our previous work in hemophilia B and in familial hypercholesterolemia. We've identified HIFU parameters that have resulted in improved transfection efficiency with minimal hepatic bioeffects assessed by H&E staining. And we've also incorporated a multi-targeting depth approach in a single treatment that allows us to transfect more hepatocytes within multiple planes of the liver as a way to potentially improve transfection. In future studies, we plan to use our optimized HIFU approach to mediate gene therapy for preclinical gene therapy for hemophilia B and familial hypercholesterolemia using two strategies. One in which we use HIFU to mediate therapeutic gene transfer in knockout mouse models for both disorders. And in the second approach, we plan to use HIFU-mediated delivery of CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing constructs using point mutation models that we have available for both uh, disorders as well. Um, we'd additionally like to include ultrasound guidance in our focused ultrasound approaches um, as a further uh, method for improving upon our studies. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to thank my supervisor and mentor, Dr. Ralph Showit, um, and members from the University of Hawaii. Um, I'd like to thank the Focus Ultrasound Foundation for the opportunity to present this research. Thank you. Question, Rick. So if I understand correctly, you're coupling naked plasma into the bubble shell, is that correct? Yes. Okay, is that, what, what, what is the coupling mechanism there? Charge or is it a... Uh, charged, electrostatic, yeah. You mentioned that there was some damage that you saw, especially with the unfocused transducers. What type of hepatocyte damage would you see, or is there any vascular damage? Um, it appears to be infiltration of red blood cells, um, not necessarily vascular damage. Um, we do also assess uh, liver transaminase levels in plasma samples um, and have observed slight increases but not statistically significant. Huh? Do you think that those are acceptable? I mean, I would think that there's just, you know, transient damage to the vasculature to allow for these genes to get in there, but probably recovers quite rapidly without any clinical sequela. Um, I, I would agree with that, especially in the liver. Um, and I, I think um, based on this strategy in the liver, um, some extent of the damage um, is beneficial for mediating the high levels of transfection. Any other questions? Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate it.